so today we'll see uh, again that how remote sensing and gis is used for various applications of uh, hydrology so we already know that the satellites are those which are moving around the gravitational force of a central mass the far path followed by the satellite is called orbit this is the orbit which is followed by a satellite the satellite moves as per the kepler's law the line joining to the planet to the sun sweeps out equal area in equal time so you have got two kinds of satellites that are working we are familiar with one is uh, geostationary satellites which uh, with an equatorial west to east satellites are orbiting at an altitude of 35000 km the altitude of which uh, it makes one revolution in 24 hours synchronous with the earth rotation then you have got sun synchronous satellite that is an earth uh, satellite orbit in which the orbital plane is near polar and the altitude in the uh, is such that the satellite passes over all the places on the earth having the same latitude twice in each orbit at the same local so you will be using this all parameters into consideration for the physical basics and applications like we'll be using the optical properties we'll be using the thermal properties you will be using the microwave properties and which we'll be doing the measurements related to optical is reflectance for thermal uh, imagery is we are more uh, interested in the brightness temperatures in microwave we are interested in and the measurement is the back scattered energy and the reflectance is based on uh, a spectral signature the brightness temperature is based on blanks blanks law and the black scattered energy is based on the electrical properties this is a physical basis and the formulas that are used for modeling we are providing in optical image processing in thermal rt models are there parameter retrievals are there and in microwave we have got process models and finally there are applications like in optical that can be used in various land operations thermal in different ocean operations microwave in different atmospheric operations so this is how the water is seen in the microwave and the optical remote sensing series so on the left hand side you will be seeing the uh, microwave data sets and the right hand side the optical data sets so water has a reflectance only in the visible portion of the electromagnetic radiations water absorbs nearly all the incident in both the near and the middle infrared so you will see none of the reflectance is there in the near and middle infrared the advantage for remote sensing as it we have is distinctly lower reflectance than either vegetation or the soil through the reflective ir and the microwave portion of the spectrum so you can see as i'll not go into the detail as we have already discussed and covered uh, the spectral response curve signature of the various objects so you can see that how the different kinds of water can be differentiated whether you talk about clear water you are talk about the big water you talk about vegetation soil dry soil wet soil so all such parameters can be easily delineated using the spectral response curve and this is the multi temporal data sets where the according to the multi uh, dates what was the dry season what was the saturation day and when did the fault occur so this is the satellite image where a represents this black color Uh, denotes to the water area b denotes to the settlement area and c denotes to the vegetation and other features so you can see that the satellite images provide you the real uh, analysis of the area which has been flood affected and you can see a large area is under cultivation and major uh, settlement areas are also situated near the flood affected area so we have to have a utmost care for such kind of studies so what are the principles of detection of uh, different water components as we have done earlier in many of the topics that is reflection and absorption of water in optical region that is delineation of wetlands turbidity 
vegetation NDVI etc then you have got emission in thermal infrared bands that is temperature of the cloud top land surface then back scattered energy in the microwave region that is radar where we go for water split flood soil moisture microwave emission that is passive radiometers soil moistures rain rates detection of time delay of radar signals that is ranging altimeter where we are going for the water level river discharge detection of the gravity gravity anomaly we have got a gray satellites that is ground water then hyper fine remote sensing hundred of banks in the optical region tes water quality iso topic measurement so the different kinds of uh, moisture contained water subsurface uh, underground water all the water can be easily delineated demarcated and uh, we can identify those features so what are the main components of a radar system then one is microwave transmitter that is used to generate the microwave electromagnetic energy transmitted by the radar then you have got a microwave receiver this is to detect the microwave pulse that is reflected by the area being imaged then you have got an antenna that is used to uh, through which uh, microwave pulses are transmitted and received uh, and uh, it observes the strength that is the detection and the time delay that is the ranging of the return time so this is the satellite uh, for example this is our sensor radar system it is uh, sending the energy to the various earth objects so this is the pulse then this is the echo the this is the total area is known that's we have already discussed then we have uh, got different kinds of bands that are available in uh, radar microsafes that is hf band vhf band v whf band l band s band c band x band k u band k band K band, V band, W band, MM band, and their frequencies uh, are different for different uh, bands. So you can see that how this uh, transmitter is being uh, sent towards the target, and through this antenna, and the back scattered energy is being recorded using various antennas. So right now we'll be using the synthetic aperture radar. That has got uh, all weather capability in day night using capacity city self illuminating the beam. Then radar remote sensing uses the microwave portions of the electromagnetic spectrum from uh, frequency of 0.3 gigahertz that is one meter to 300 gigahertz that is one mm. So one m milli one meter to one millimeter. This is the entire principles ki how this uh, radar acts on so we have already done the basics so what are the factors that controls the variations and backscattered or microwave remote sensing is surface roughness then surface dielectric constant then incident angle polarization wavelength and frequency so what do you mean by dielectric constant the dielectric constant is a measure of the electrical conductivity of a material. Then the degree of scattering by an object or a surface is proportional to the dielectric constant of the materials. The moisture content of a material can change its electrical properties. The presence of moisture increases a material's complex uh, dielectric constant like soil, it's 3 to 6 vegetation, 1 to 3 soil water, 35 to 45 water, 80. So these are the uh, means each and every earth object has got a different electrical conductivity and we'll be using this uh, difference in electrical conductivity for identification and the delineation of the various earth materials then you have got an incident angle that is the angle between the radar illumination and the normal to the ground surface the term local incident angle takes into the account of the local slope of the terrain at any location without the image for example, for agri agricultural monitoring, uh, we use generally 30 to 40 degree for soil, moisture 15 to 25 degree for forest mapping, 25 to 35 degree, and for urban understanding, 35 to 45 degree. So that is your incident angle. So you can see this is a, a surface where you've got two kinds of surface that you've got a specular surface, you've got a diffuse 
uh, surface. So for a specular uh, scattering is there, then there is a diffuse scattering. So diffuse uh, scattering is a back scattered component. Uh, this is the angle of incident, angle of uh, reflection. So when very smooth surface, when the height of the feature on the surface is greater than than wavelength of the incoming electromagnetic radiations. So the next is uh, polarization. So multipolarization helps to detect the physical structure of the surface. Polarization refers to the orientation of the electrical vector of uh, electromagnetic wave, orientation of the wave oscillations like polarized, like HS refers to horizontally transmitted and received waves. Cross polarization HV refers to horizontal transmission and vertical reception. Then you have got wavelengths. Wavelength is the capability to penetrate through the precipitation or into a surface layer is increased with longer wavelengths. Radar operating at wavelengths greater than Two centimeters are not significantly affected by cloth cover. However, rain does not become a factor at a wavelength shorter than four centimeters. So what we do, we download the microwaves uh, radar data sets. Then we go for a speckle removal. Then we are going for the generation of incident angle array. Then calibration of the date of the image. Then georeferencing the data. Then multi-part georegistrations are done. And finally, the data analysis of feature identification is performed. So you can see that this is the inland water bodies spread delineation and analysis over the major rivers of India. So you can see that how the various uh, water spread during the post monsoon wetland projects. So you can see the entire uh, water bodies uh, easily identified using satellite remote sensing when it comes to the entire area. And when you want to see the multi-temporal changes in the water spread in any area, so you can see that uh, if you compare a satellite image with the 2013 and 2017, the amount of water uh, is uh, decreasing. So we'll be going for the reason why there is a decrease in the water or whether there is an increase or whether you are going for uh, new areas which are being used or uh, which has been suggested for different kinds of conservation or new area where the water conservation sites has come up. So this is the water spread change analysis from 2013 versus 2007 for 525 reservoirs of area where red to yellow color show decrease in the area and green to blue shows increase in the area. So by using the satellite remote sensing you can see as in India as a whole queue what is the water condition status whether we are uh, conserving our existing water uh, structures or what is their health whether the water because of the increasing population whether the demand has increased if the demand is increasing, what is the health of those river bodies or the reservoirs so you will see that there is an overall decrease in the area with 26684 uh, hectares and uh, of decrease is there so uh, this is a very alarming condition because your population is increasing, your demand on water is increasing, but uh, you will see that uh, the water level over the different periods, the different reservoir, it's decreasing. So if there is a decreasing tail and if you are not going to control it, in the coming days you will see a large amount of water scarcity. So that's why the remote sensing and GIS plays an important role for the mitigation and management of the a water bearing structure so you can see that uh, in the current image what are the changes that has happened on the river river system from 2007 to 2013 whether the areas has increased or decreased uh, for the different river system and which are the area which are having more than greater than or equal to 500 hectares of uh, differences there so you can see that the total inland during the post monsoon was the with a greater than 50 uh, hectares, the area was 4.94 in 2006, it was 6.22, means there is a decrease in point minus 1.306. So area of water is spread greater than equal than 500 in October to November, that was 4.56 in 2013, and that was uh, 2007, it was 5.51. Then again, there is a negative trend that says minus 0 0.9, uh, 74 
million hectares of land has been decreased then area of water is spread greater than 50 hectares but equal to and less than 500 hectares in 2013 it was 0.378 and 2007 it was 0.712 and that is a decrease in 0.33 for area so you can you see that how the multi temporal data sets of the satellite images can be utilized for identification and demarcation of the multi temporal analysis so you can see that how the rainfall based surface runoff covers the rainfall inflow to the reservoir and associated change in the water speed and the volume so you can see that how the change in the water uh, profile in a particular reservoir you can take out and you can see and you can suggest what are the different kinds of temporal var variation that has happened on uh, the uh, area so the satellite derived hydrological variables water spread dynamics has been uh, used as a proximity to estimate the reservoir's water level the simple signature analysis based on threshold models will be adequate to delineate the water spread dynamics then developed model statistically performed splendidly with correlation coefficient with 0.88 rms square 1.16 that is uh, less than 11 percent so results suggest that the major uh, reservoirs uh, or rivers and the tain banks are uh, decreasing in nature so if it is uh, decreasing why it's decreasing will be going into the geogenesis for the decrease in the entire wetlands in india so if you want to see the change on the wetlands in any area you can see that uh, the wetlands has a uh, uh, negative impact negative means uh, it has disappeared previously it was uh, uh, less now uh, more now it's less so if you are going into that terrain so you will be seeing that okay, how this wetlands have disappeared in many of the terrains and uh, you can also identify the new wetlands that has developed in that area so you can see the river characteristics okay, how over the different decades and the dates the uh, river profile we can create and we can see the depth we can check for the river migration we can go for the width of uh, the channels so all such studies can be done related to binary river mask images then we'll be calculating the distance from each river pixels to the nearer non-river pixels then we'll be performing the convolute with 2d laplacian filter pixel close to the centralized line has close to zero value so we'll be using the different algorithms to identify the different changes in the rival channels the minute changes that are very impossible to be delineated when you are going into the field but when you are using the satellite remote sensing you can see key how uh, beautifully how effectively how uh, accurately we can go for the different kinds of river morphological analysis related to the optical data related to micro uh, wave data where we can go for different kinds of turbidity analysis we can go for the river which is uh, calm we can go for island rivers we can go for different kinds of uh, geomorphological uh, units demarcation we can go for different kinds of classification of uh, land use land cover categories so you can see how beautifully the remote sensing and gis technique when you are taking the different kinds of polarization in terms of uh, microwave data you can identify the different kinds of uh, water so you can see that how beautifully a calm water and a turbulent water can be easily delineated with using the different kinds of polarization that it was conducted in 2012 where where as various morphological features have been delineated although there is some overlap between the island and the turbulent water calm water and the flood plain area so many times maybe you can have some mixed pixels of various classes but still if you go for the overall accuracy and the understanding of the area you can have the basic understanding where the sediment deposition and the flood water receding pattern can be easily captured using the satellite remote sensing so you can go for 
calculation of the eroded classes what was the total area what is the total area that is flood indented what is the total area when the river decided and what was the damage done to the various river classes when we have done such studies so what is the principles of uh, altimetry for the satellites that we are using for the analysis of demarcation so satellite uh, altimetry is a technique for measuring height by estimating the time taken by a radar pulse to travel from the satellite antenna to the surface and back to the satellite surface so you can see that how the different in the channels the reflectant patterns differ the signal strength differ the distance differs so first is the area of interaction between the pulse and the surface grows to form a disk so this is that as the trailing edge of the pulse reaches to the surface the illumination area forms an annular ring of increasing diameter and narrowing width then the maximum power on the waveform occurs at the time of transition to an annular ring leading to edge and peaks and backscattered power begins to decline trailing edge and due to limitation of the antenna beam width and limited proper reflectance factors so these are the various parameters with their range value where we'll be going for the altimeter band then we'll be checking for the pulse width pulse duration altimeter repetition frequency echo time spectral analyzers altimeter link width then uh, antenna diameter focal length offset value radiometric bands radiometric resolution accuracy averaging so as a result of the rapid uh, random distribution of the wave facets at any instant each individual return being is very noisy but averaging many successive pulse can reduce such kinds of error so not only that we'll be using the time series data to measure the uh, mean return power wavelength and that can be expressed as a convocation of three terms in the time domain as given by the scientist brown in 1997 where t denotes to the satellite receiver's time p fs time refers to the average impulse response from a flat surface qs time refers to the surface elevation probability density function of specular points within the altimeter footprints and ptr t radar system points target uh, response ptr so we can go for the thermal noise where the altimeter sometimes generate the noise power for the first return of a signal from the scattering surface and it imposes a constant power level to the return waveform then the late uh, leading edge this is the part of the main part of the waveform which contains the maximum return power from the scattering surfaces the range between the satellites altimeters and the mean surface at the nadar can be extracted from the leading edges the trailing edges as the return power from the scattering uh, surface is decaying the trailing edge of the wave form is constructed and it is approximately by a straight line whose slope depends on the altimeter antenna pattern and the of nadar so you have got range retracting and geophysical uh, corrections that has to be done the main objective of retracting process is to correct the range estimated by the onboard tracker the surface topography vary variation causes the shift in the tracking gate as compared to the pre design for an board tracker so this is the offset that is retracking gate minus tracking gates into the sample size by speed of light so you will be checking the correlated uh, range and the retracted range plus a wet troposphere peak correction has to be performed dry troposphere correction has to be performed ionis spheric correction solid tight polar tight correction has to be performed and finally water surface height will be getting from altitude minus the corrected range so this is the formula that we'll be using for retracting gate where the beam numbers corresponding to the leading edge position and this is calculated using the different retracting algorithms such as beta 5 ocg threshold etc where you'll be using all the formula in case of river waveforms with a five parameters retractor is used to fit the specular reflections from the water surface where b1 
is the thermal noise level to the return wing b2 is the maximum return uh, signal amplitude b3 is the midpoint of the leading edge of the waveform b4 is the return wave form rise temperature b5 is the slope of the uh, trailing edge so you can see that what are the uh, we have got the entire series of satellites <coughs> where we can go for the different reservoir lakes river system so you can see that how this different kinds of uh, area is being sensed recorded by the different uh, trackers this is the different tracks with the different time period that is the altimeter retrieved data and what is the observed data we are just trying to correlate it with the field data with the satellite based data and we want to see the water level of a brahmaputra river over the different periods of a time what is the that is from march 2013 to february 2015 so you can see that the amount of scattered water uh, generated between the observed and the altimeter retrieved data shows a very positive correlation and we can suggest that the amount of uh, map or the amount of information that is generated from the satellite based uh, is nearly accurate and it's matching to the observed uh, ground truth data sets then river discharge estimation you can see for the different dates what was the different discharge and you can see that the that is also as equally uh, have a positive correlation at a different point location in that area and you can see that uh, the data are multi temporal in nature so you can have a exact real time monitoring and that can be used for forecasting because the biggest advantage is key for the satellite images that we can go for forecasting where the track uh, uh, passing dates are used and those dates those measurements can be used as a model as a parameter to give the amount of input parameters to our satellite system we have will be training our model will be providing the data sites and on the basis of those data sites on the basis of those model parameters we can project we can suggest about the dates what is going to happen what is the situation whether the situation will be on a positive end or whether it will be in a negative end positive means whether if you are going for a flood whether the area will increase or decrease so such kind of studies can easily be done using a satellite remote sensing then you have got uh, reservoir water availability using saral uh, Altica, where two years data sets of uh, poor rainfall has led to the uh, decrease in the water levels of many Indian major reservoirs, leading to the condition of hydrological drought in most part of the country during summer 2016. In the current year, till recently, situation has improved significantly as compared to the last year, although there is a significant deficit with the normal water availability and the Saral Altica detected lowest water level in 2016 with significant improvement in the current year 2017 in Ukai and Ban Sagar reservoir reveals the amount of water volume availability has increased significantly that is 57% in 2017 as we compared with 2016 where there is still it is uh, less than 16.4% uh, in comparison to the normal summer of 2014 for the same uh, time frame over the reservoir. Similar trends of water level has been observed in the Mansagar reservoir. So this is the satellite image where the uh, Saral Altica pass over the reservoir was taken into consideration to identify the a water level situation the fluctuations situation over the different year and the period of time and you can see that the uh, satellite data sets can be utilized for demarcation and delineation of the condition in the any area thereafter we'll be using the reservoir water index to depict the hydrological drought condition of uh, india so major reservoir of india shows depletion of water level in 2016 when you compare with the previous year's data sets.
so you can see that how the different indices are being used for the water index to depict the hydrological drought condition of over the area uh, 